all right so this is the review for the for the for milestone two that is up so i'm going to bring it up over here and if you have any questions please uh, stop me and ask so uh project milestone two So uh, what do we have for, for Milestone 2? For Milestone 2, this is the scenario. So the very first thing that you're going to do for Milestone 2, you're going to create a general header file called pos.h, which is going to hold uh, all the constant values that we have for the, for the project. So uh, define these constant values um, in pos.h. And if any other constant values you have that you need them to be um, available throughout your application, you add it into the POSH. Anything general that you want to add, it's going to be in there. Uh, that's in POS.H. Then you're going to create... Uh, uh, any questions about POS.H? Kali, go ahead. And Xing Yu. Please activate the, uh, the microphone and speak. Kali, Shen Yu, you said yes when I said, do you have a question? Okay, so let me actually change this because people are not responding properly for some reason. So I'm going to see over here, any questions? Okay. All right. So, um, and Kali is not even answering. I don't know why he said he or she said yes, but anyways. So, error class. So, what is error class? Error class is essentially um, um, uh, an object whose responsibility is to see if any error, anything happened in your class of any type. So, we created a flag. So, essentially, when you create a Boolean um, in your class, uh, create a Boolean variable in your class and you call it status or error status and you set it to true or false. Instead of doing that, we are creating an error class. What error class is doing is a very simple task. It has one dynamic string in it and that one dynamic string carries an error message. If that dynamic string is null and there is nothing in there, then error should be false. It means there is no error. If that error message is set to anything, any message, then the error is true, which means the object you have is in an error state. So what you do is just that. You create the error class that by default it is empty. There is no dynamic memory or whatsoever in it. It's just null. And uh, then series of stuff, series of uh, operations you're going to create. First of all, it's going to have rule of three, which means you have to have copy constructor, copy assignment, and the destructor created for it. And uh, uh, the operations that you do, it should be able to be assigned to a C string. That's how you set to error. So if you have a, um, a, an object of type error, error called ERR, you can say ERR is equal to invalid integer. Therefore, the error object is now set, which means it is your object is in an error state. Uh, you can actually check it and, and we'll go through that. The other thing that we need is Boolean type conversion, which essentially means it returns true if the object is in an error state, which means it returns true if the error message is set and it's not null. And it returns false, which means it is not in an error state if that error message is null, which means there is no error message, which means we are in clear. Uh, so the example for it is like this. So error ERR, you should be able to say if error, it's going to say there is an error. Otherwise, there is no error. What clear does, it what it does exactly to C in. So C in has a clear. When you clear, it goes out of the error state. That's what it is. So when you call the clear of error, essentially it deallocates uh, the message, if there is any, and sets it to null, which is uh, error goes out of the uh, error state. 
the O string insertion for the error. Uh, so if you insert the O stream, uh, I, the error object into O stream, which essentially means printing it or writing it in any way. If you do that, what happens is that it should uh, print the contents of the error message. Or if there is no error message, nothing will happen. It's not going to show anything. Okay, so that's that. Um, uh, and uh, um, are we okay now to this point? Any questions? No questions? Okay. And if for all these things, for to accomplish all the things that I told you, if you need to and you should uh, create any extra methods, by all means do it. You can choose to make those methods private or public um, however you want. It doesn't make any difference. It's, it's your choice. But other methods, uh, if you need, please use it. Uh, and again, do not use friends in to implement the things that we are talking about. You need to actually uh, create accessor or helper fun uh, uh, accessor or private uh, private or uh, member method um, methods to actually make these things work. After you create the error class, we are ready to actually start our first actually the business logic application, which is date. So we have a date class, and the date class encapsulates date and time. So what it has, it has five integers in it: one to represent year the other one month, day, and uh, fourth one is hour, and fifth one is minute. The last two ones, that is hour and minute, could be ignored or not ignored depending if our date is in date-only mode or regular. If it's in date-only mode, if you set the object into date-only mode, automatically it sets the hour and minute to zero and only takes care of the date, whatever the date is, so that three uh, year, month, and day. Um, if it's not in date only uh, method, then th those two will count. Anyways, and the validation process for the uh, for the date happens like this. So, uh, at any like whenever we ask you to do validation in a process, so we say set everything, set the values, and then do validation, something like that. So whenever we tell you do validation, you start from the year and you check the value of the year to see if it's valid or not. The validation of the year is up here in the POS.h. You know exactly what minimum and maximum values are the years are, so you actually set it to that one. So the very first thing is to do is to check year. If everything's good, you do month. If everything's good, you do day. If it's good, um, you do uh, hour and you do uh, minute. But say month is in er the, uh, erroneous state, which means year passed, but for example, month is set to 14. If that's the case, immediately you set the error property of the date to invalid month, and you don't check anything anymore. So at any stage of validation, if you hit something that is invalid, you go to the error object of the date, and you set the, the, uh, the error object to the message corresponding to what just happened and you ignore the rest of the validation. Uh, and that's exactly mentioned over here. So validation sequence, if the year is invalid, you set it to this. And so these are the values that you set the error message to if uh, validation happens. So validation doesn't happen one by one when you are like um, when uh, yeah so when you're for example reading something you don't do one by one reading you read everything then you validate everything. Um, any questions on this? Vlad, Niron, Mehdi, Hania. No, I was just thinking, and after that, I understood that everything's fine for oh, me. Okay, that's very <laughs> fine. I, I thank you, Vlad. Thank you very much. Actually, is it okay if I call you Vlad? Uh, yeah, actually, because uh, like, Vlad is love. How do you, which one you prefer? No, first, uh, first one was okay, because like it's gonna be hard for everyone to pronounce. No, actually, I have a friend called Vladislav, and he's he. 
we call him Vlad. So <laughs> it's it's okay to call me Vlad. So I just call like I'm your okay friend, like my friend. I'm calling you Vlad. Okay, but anyway, no, so, so um, yeah, thank you, Vlad, for activating microphone. I really appreciate that. Everybody, please do that, so I don't have to look uh, left and right and see what happens. So. Uh, we have few already implemented utility functions that I actually wrote you the logic for it for the date uh, to, to the, the complex part of date processing and stuff like that is done through those things and I'm going to explain them one to one by one. So first of all, a system date and time. If you want to, because this is a date object, you want to be able to set it to now. Uh, like when you are printing a receipt, you want to have the date, current date and time of the action to be get printed at the top of the receipt. That's what you do. So you, you need to set the date to the current time. To do that, this is the function. So it, it, uh, re returns the, uh, it receives the reference of year, month, day, hour, and minute, and if it's date only or not. And it sets the year, month, day, and hour arguments, the references, to the system date. And it is done like this. You can actually go through it and check it out and see how it works, but I'm not going to explain it. It's beyond our pay grade. Uh, what it does, it uses few C library functions that is in a time header file and uh, gets the local time, sets the day and a month and a year. And if it's date only, it sets hour and minute to zero. If it's not, it actually sets the hour and minute to, and that's your get system date. So whenever you want to, you can uh, take the logic and make it a private property, uh, pro private method if you want to, or you can add this to your utils, dot, uh, utils header file, utils uh, uh, um, uh, module and use it as a, a helper function, your choice. Any questions on this? Go ahead. Man, man yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, should we put these functions in utils? You can do that. Sure. You can either. Okay. So I, again, I because people have different tastes, right? You can just say, okay, I know I, I got the logic. I'm going to create a private pro, private method in my date and don't pass these things as simply make this a private method. Call it now to set everything. You understand that? You yeah. can do that, or if you prefer not to put it in utils. All you this is a the the thing about project is it replaces the DIY of the workshop. So it means everything's open. You can do anything you want in here. Got it, Nikolai? Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right. Man uh, uh, I I don't know how to pronounce your name. Man Man yeah, just just call me Mandy. Mandy, okay, Mandy. So my yeah, apology, just... I couldn't uh, I couldn't uh, uh, pronounce it properly. But anyways, uh, Mandy, no, no, uh, you fine. had a question. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure um, for the util. So if we use any of your logic, uh, we just refer you. Uh, it's fine, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In your citation, you're gonna say the system date that was uh, yeah to set it to like in in the citation, you're gonna say that the system date was. Uh, 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 is set using the function provided in the description of yada yada yada. That's okay, it. so what about uh, some functions that you gave previously in lecture notes like you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do for those too. You just simply write, I got this from the notes on here or there. Okay. Very right. simple. Mm -hmm. Like any place you get the notes, you put it over there. And um, to just make it clear for me, so it's easier for me to, to uh, mark you, just uh, uh, you can have a section added over here saying subject material and then put the citation over there. And if there is anything that is not from sub subject and you got it, I don't know, from chat GPT or something, then you're going to write over here external source. You put it over there. So the citation goes like that. Got it? Yeah, so if we have some external source, I'll quote some code from some external source, will we get penalized or it's fine? It's not penalized. You, it's, it's not a penalty because that part you didn't do yourself, you're going to lose the mark for that. You can challenge that. You can actually talk to me and explain to me how the work code works. If the code works perfectly, if you understand how the work code works perfectly, then it's not a copy. You can actually change it. To your own version and not even cite it. Do you understand no. what I'm saying? Yes. So if yes. you get an outsource, if you get a code that is from outside, you read it, you understand exactly how it works, then set it aside, write your own version of it and done with it. You don't need to cite it. That's how you learn. Mission accomplished, right? But if you didn't understand how it works and you're just using it, 
to submit your work, then you cite it. Does that make sense? Yeah. All, yeah. Right. Thank you. All right. So unique date and time integer. So when you are comparing two dates, you want to find out which date is greater than the other one. So the value that the date has, which date comes later, which date comes earlier. To do something like that, either you have to write this nasty if statement or you can use this unique date value. So the function that I created, it, it generates a unique number, integer number that is tied to date. If the date goes higher, this integer number will grow. If the date comes lower, the integer number shrinks. If the two dates are equal, same time, same date, the integer numbers are equal. So what happens is that to compare two dates, you can use this function. So pass the date and a month and a year and an hour, the value that it returns, compare those two and you compare your dates. Um, are, um, any questions on this? All right. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, but I have a different question about the citation, uh, which is kind of referred to Mandy's question. Okay. Yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, we need to put citation on every work that we do. No, cit no, 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 no. Citation on every work that is not yours. Mm -hmm. Anything that okay. is yours, do not cite. Again, you go read an article and understand how something works. Then using that article, you write your own code and you can explain exactly how it works. You don't need to cite it because you learned it. Do you, do you okay, uh, but at the, the beginning of the file? Uh, it's in reflection and anywhere that code exists. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, so at the beginning of your file, like you need to yeah, put also like... Yeah, at the top that you write a signature and you write modifications, stuff like you write a big signature at the beginning of each function, correct? At the mm -hmm. bottom of that thing, you write the citation. Okay, and if you, for, for instance, forgot to put a citation on milestone one, uh, not a citation, sorry, uh, your honesty declaration at the beginning of the file, uh, can you just like resubmit it? Uh, you, or, yeah, or... so you, you have all the milestones, you can sub resubmit them up to April 16th. Oh, yeah, I know that, but I still, I just wanted to... No, no, res again, correcting milestones 1, 2, 3, and 4, you can do it as much as you want, and you should. You cannot use your implementation of MS1 exactly as it is in the last one. You have to change it. If the changes are very uh, uh, core changes, then you can go back and resubmit your milestone 1. Your first submission counts for the time so when you submit something on time the, your submission is on time you can submit it few, many times after that late and even extra late you're not going to reduce that's not going to reduce any mark because you submitted your first submission successfully on time does that make sense yeah okay thank you sorry for asking no, no, no. Uh, thank you actually good that you're asking these questions because we need to know this is this is important people uh, because uh, that's how r in real life your work will be done uh, and people are going to hold you accountable for all these things in real life so be careful okay and and thank you very much uh, I think it was Vlad who was asking the question but uh, yes so uh, the other one is days of month so what days of month over here is doing is because each month has a different maximum uh, maximum uh, number of days <clears throat> january is 31 february is 28 or 29 depending on leap year and so on and so forth it goes up to that because of that i wrote this function that tells you what is the number of days in a month for the given year because each year could be leap year so ye leap year happens uh, every four years um, if it's not a hundred years, but if it's uh, 400. So it's not an, uh, it wasn't a, a simple thing that I would ask you to do it. So I just wrote it. Uh, so days of month over here, you give it the, the year and the month, it tells you for that year, what is the number of days for the month? Obviously for 30, for January, uh, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December, 
the values are always what you see in this array but this 28 changes to 29 every this many times so so uh, and that is set uh, depending on the year and that's the days of month so if you are validating the month to see if the days are not exceeding the maximum that's the maximum where you get the maximum uh, any questions on this all right so date construction so by default when you are creating a date uh, it is it will not be date only it's going to be full date with time and it will be automatically set to the current date of the system so if you just create a date with nothing with no arguments that's what happens um, the, or, or you can actually uh, create the, uh, the date using year month and uh, day which obviously makes it date only or you can create the date with our month day uh, sorry, uh, why did I say hour? Oh, oh, I have to fix this. See, <laughs> this is not hour, it's year. So let me just fix this right off bat. Shoot, how do I find it? Um, hour. Date class attributes, hour, hour, hour. Yeah, so this is year month. Yes, Nick. Nikolai? Yeah. Uh, what should we do if, if we find a small typo in the tests, in the expected results? Uh, you tell me if I, if, uh, if I can fix it on time. I do otherwise match the typo. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, can I send you on Teams? Yes, uh, so of okay. course, send on Teams. You can even create sure. a pull request if you know how to do it. Oh, <laughs> I'll try that. I think I'll try that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good idea because I can get a thing and I did so you can actually fix it and send me a pull request if you want to. Yeah, but I'll if train. You okay. If you don't have access to it, if you don't mm -hmm. have an access to it, just let me know and I'll fix it for you. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. And obviously, there are going to be typos. There is no question about that. Every single thing that we do, it's human we make mistakes so that happens all the time uh so yeah so uh if date can get created using date and time which is year month and day um and hour and minute of course and if that's the case then it's going to be not going to be set to uh date only and then the everything is validated so very first you set then you validate uh, overload all the comparison operators to make sure you can compare it any way you want in future if you want to sort stuff on dates and things like that maybe we need it um the date only modifier is a function uh, that receives a boolean using that you can actually set the date to be date only or not uh when it's the, the, the only catch for it is that when you set it to date only you have to set the hour and month to zero uh, but when it's set to false then you don't do anything stop me if there is any question anywhere the boolean type conversion operator so what happens is that when you check a date for 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 truth or falsehood so if you have something like if date so you have like date dt then you say if dt what happens is that you return the opposite of the state of the error so essentially you return not error which means if there is no error it's going to return true it means date is in a good state and if uh, error is, re is returning true, it's going to return false, which means uh, the date is in a bad state. The error query, we're going to have a function called, the, um, a method called error. It returns the reference of the error object as entire thing. So if somebody wants to receive the whole error object and do something with it, that's what they do. So they can get the whole error and then check it for truth or falsehood or you can check the uh, or you or they can just uh, uh, check the date uh, itself as a boolean o stream insertion operator so uh, it inserts a date into o stream object which prints it if it's uh, if uh, if it's not in an er uh, erroneous state uh, it and it's date only it's going to print it in that format 
if it is not in an error state it's going to print it in this format so it shows you exactly what format you're going to print if the date is in an error state first it's going to print the error then it's going to put, put, put whatever value it contains that caused the error inside parentheses in front of it so for example the date a that i have is a valid date only the other one is a valid not date only and this one is the one that has error in its uh, hour so what happens is that if i print a it's going to print it date only if i print b it's going to print it like this if i print it over here because it was validated and obviously the error is set to invalid error when you print the error before that it's going to print invalid error then you put uh, parentheses, then you print the entire thing and close parentheses. So we can see it's invalid hour and that's the invalid hour over there. So obviously, as you see, minute is invalid too, but because we stop as soon as we hit an error, we are not printing any message for that. Uh, any questions on this? <laughs> Because friends are not something that we need to use in these parts, I keep mentioning that do not use friend. So for this thing, again, have uh, functions created to, to do that. Don't use friend for this. Istream extraction. So to actually uh, get the values of a date from uh, the uh, old Istream, this is what we do. Well, we receive it from Istream. Uh, in the exact same format that is printed so um, as you see over here so if I act so uh, first we're gonna when you are reading starting to read from the from iStream first you clear any error that date is in because it's fresh you're just getting it then you read all the values to the end okay and um, um, bypassing all the uh, uh, bypassing all the, what should we call it, uh, the error messages, and then uh, uh, bypassing all the delimiters, and then you validate it. So, so for example, when you read this, this is a perfectly good f thing to read. Even this is a good thing to read. Really. You do not need to validate the values of the delimiters. As, so, as long as there is a delimiter and the read is successful, the read is successful it's reading it so it's going to read like that it's going to read like this and this one's going to read like that obviously this is going to be erroneous which means we're going to have errors after it validates but if not then uh, that's that so after you read all the values from uh, as soon as you go through one by one to through all these reads uh, you check to see if the uh, ice stream failed or not if the user entered an integer that is not readable if that's the case then you set it to the proper message that I could not so when it reads the year if it can't read the year you set the error message that uh, uh, cannot read this this one cannot read route so any value that you read you check C in oh, sorry you check I stream to see I stream has failed or not if it failed set it to the proper thing so we know which one was read proper read incorrectly so these are cannot reads it's not invalid they just can't you cannot read it after if all these things passes and all the values are read properly then you validate the entire thing and the process goes exactly like the constructor and that's how you read uh, from the uh, input so make sure that if the C I stream I stream fails don't clear it because we want the next process to be able to uh, ch check and see if uh, um, the I stream failed or not uh, any questions on this <laughs> All right, because we have so many different things to do, I, I put uh, testers for every single thing. So error tester is the one that checks your error class. C constant value test, make sure that your constant values are set properly. 
date constructor test checks the constructors of the test to, to date to see if it's okay logical operators of the test and validation of the test so these are the five tests back to back you can test them one by one so these are these are the uh, uh, the source codes for them and obviously uh, you can check the output for them to see exactly what the output is and I put all these things together in main.cpp so main.cpp goes from the beginning to the end and checks them all and submits them and the submission happens uh, like usual so you do it like this and you submit please remember you have dash do to see when is the due date you have dash feedback just to, to get the feedback if you want to uh, and you have uh, uh, skip spaces and uh, uh, skip lines if you are spacing and stuff is not right and you want to submit it and uh, lose a bit a little bit of mark but uh, do it you can actually submit it like that and that's the end of milestone two. Uh, any questions about milestone two? All right, so milestone two is done. I'm going to record, uh, stop the recording.